Oh, God. Hey, guys, it's Editing Ally and uh, Coco. There she goes. I just want to hop on here and say I filmed this video six weeks ago, and uh, then I got a job, and then I went to visit family and friends in Texas, and then I came back, and I had really bad allergies. And um, anyway, I finally have a day off where I can finish the video and show you guys these awesome cookies. So I hope you enjoy. I'm really sorry, but videos to come, and check out our social media links down below, and we'll see you soon. Bye. And welcome back to Alan Cook Science Show. Um, it is late spring and Colette took one step outside into the 91 degree weather and said, absolutely not. So I put on my biking lab coat and I am going around town looking for what's blooming right now. And uh, more specifically, I'm looking for Magnolia Grandiflora. So I was on uh, TikTok and saw Alexis. Um, she's also on Instagram and YouTube if those are your jam, but um, she's just, amazing and she inspired me to make magnolia cookies i absolutely think you should follow her so i'm going to put all the links in the descriptions for you to follow her on whatever platform you love but um let's go get let's go get some flowers let's make cookies i have never seen a magnolia this tall this is amazing this is amazing so I found a smaller magnolia with more attainable flowers, but I'm not gonna pick from this one because there's actually a wasp right here. And you see those little bumps? Those are called galls. Some insects will create galls to um, house their babies in. So it's literally like stem tissue. I don't know if you can see. And this wasp is just keeping watch. Very exciting. So, okay, we're leaving. Alrighty, Magnolia grandiflora. Native to the Southeast United States, but very often grown in cultivation like this one is here. They're just, they're just amazing trees. You got these shiny green leaves, the little brown underside, and the flowers are breathtaking. Not to mention they're amazing for climbing once they get big enough. I climbed on many magnolias in my day. I mean, it's still my day. Members of Magnolia AC, the Magnolia family, have been around for a long time. Um, since mm, the Cretaceous period, that's about a hundred million years old that these plants have been on this planet, which is mind boggling. Let's get a little look at these beautiful white flowers because they're super cool, super characteristic, and they're old as heck. So first off, let's talk about this thing in the middle here. This is all the like reproductive organs. Um, you have the pollen producing stamens and the ovule producing um, pistils in one location. Now let's also talk about the petals. Or are they petals? They're not petals. <laughs> so plants will sometimes have what are called sepals, which are usually like a green leafy looking part that kind of protects around the flower. Now on a magnolia, you can't really tell the difference between sepals and petals. They all look the same. So scientists created a fancy word for it called tepals. Tepals, that's a word. So both the like reproductive center and these tepals are reminiscent of a lot of ancient angiosperms, flower producing plants. I wish I could send you some smell of vision over the internet, but uh, let me just talk about the compounds real quick. I'm getting a hint of um, really florally floral, and uh, that's caused by phenylethanol, which is found in roses, um, hyacinth, orange blossom, and lang lang. And a bit more of a sweet floral caused by a compound called farnesol, and it is actually an insect pheromone, so it attracts insects very well. But it can be found in many plants like lemongrass, rose, balsam, and citronella. Another thing historically, like not <laughs> Cretaceous historic, human history, uh, magnolia around the world has been used for medicinal purposes from the bark to the leaves to the flowers uh, indigenous people and people throughout history have always used many parts of the plant for medicine which i love and on that note i should probably preface this by saying and alexis puts these in her videos as well um you know some plants will create compounds that just doesn't work with our bodies <laughs> they can make us sick or worse and so it's really important if you're foraging to know what the heck you're doing Plants are fun, let's go. We are gonna start by making that Magnolia Simple Syrup. A cup of water, a cup and a half of sugar, and four cups of petals. Get all those compounds boiling in there, and then filter out your petals. And you can use this for drinks or cookies. And now it's time to bake. Now we're gonna use a cup of some fat source. I use butter, a cup and a half of brown sugar, cream it together, throw in a tablespoon of vanilla, three-fourths cup of our Magnolia Simple Syrup, 
and three and a quarter cup of flour. I forgot to freeze a magnolia petal, but make sure you freeze one before you start cooking and you just grate it in at this point. And then I threw in a tablespoon of cinnamon, roll those cookies in some sugar and put them in the oven at 350 degrees for 15 minutes. It smells amazing, guys. Okay, time for a taste test. These honestly look and feel like snickerdoodle, so. Wow, oh my God. Okay, I'll be honest with you. When I was getting the magnolia flowers and cooking them, it was kind of making such a strong flowery soapy smell. It doesn't taste like that at all. Oh, this is delightful. This is, you know what though? You know what this needs? I'll show you. Okay, so now I got the perfect mid-morning snack. We got the rest of this cookie and the magnolia coffee. Let's see. Mmm, mm-hmm. Oh yeah. Oh, girl, we'll make you some cookies. Well, we'll make you some cookies, but here's some little chicky for now. And we'll make you cookies, we'll make puppy cookies. I should make puppy cookies on this channel. I mean, it makes sense, right? Oh my God, botany cooking though. Mm. Mm -hmm. So Coletta decided she's staying on my lap forever and I love that. So um, with that, thank you guys so much for watching. I had a lot of fun with this recipe and I, if you have magnolia around you, please like try this. It was so good. Um, for the course of the week, I want to know, have you ever foraged? Have you ever gotten plant material around you and cooked it into something? So I've cooked up um, pecan pie from pecans that I found. Um, beauty berry jelly last year, so I'll link that in the description below. And um, now magnolia cookies. Uh, so. Uh, have you ever foraged? Comment that down below. If you do decide to try foraging, make sure you know 100% that that plant is edible. Very, very important. So please be careful out there and um, know what you're doing. Do your research. <laughs> and um, links as always will be down in the description below. So that's to our social media and any other links and things and the recipe and Alexis's um, social media. So we will see you again next time and uh, thanks for watching. Bye!